Okay, continuing with this series, if you have not yet watched the intro to this series, please click on the annotation that's hopefully up on the screen that will bring you to the playlist and watch uh, at least the first intro video, which explains the concept of the dice game called Toss Up. Uh, if you have never played Toss Up or you haven't watched that uh, intro video, you may not understand what we're trying to do here. But basically, we're trying to figure out our odds on... Uh, when we're rolling the dice, what our odds are of losing or winning. Um, this is also part of a series where I'm doing the same program in a few different languages this week, uh, and today we're going to be doing it in C, which I am not a very good C programmer. So although my code here will work, um, there probably are better ways of writing it up, and I hope that I explain things properly. Um, but my code does work, so uh, let's just jump into it. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor, but use whatever editor you want. And I'll create a C file called TossUp. Next, we will import some header files. So include, oops. The standard input output library or header. And include standard lib and also include uh, the time header which I believe mainly I have uh, for generating random numbers uh, uh, next we're going to type define char asterisk string and we're also going to start our main function here and we will give it an output of return zero because uh, I always forget to do that I'm going to do that first next we're going to also want to be able to uh, pass arguments to this program so once again if you watch the previous video on doing this in bash with uh, shell scripts you can either run the command and it will ask you how many times you want to roll and the number of dice you want to roll because that's the, the two things we need from the input of the user. You can either put that as arguments or it will ask you if you don't. So we're going to have to pass it the arguments. We'll put, do that here. Uh, integer argc comma uh, constant character the argument v like that. I think I typed that all right. Now we're going to create a bunch of variables. Uh, the number of rolls, the number of dice to roll, the uh, and a few other variables here. Um, and probably could put all these on one line, uh, but I'm just going by my notes once again. I am not a very good C programmer, and I don't want to vary from my notes because things probably won't work if I do what I think will work but haven't tested. Uh, we got uh, integers here for wins and loses. That's to count the number of times you win and the number of times you lose. Uh, we're also going to do for number of greens and number of reds. Uh, in this game we roll dice with six sides. Some are green, some are yellow, some are red. We're not making integer for the yellow because in what we're doing here um, yellows are kind of irrelevant. Um, next, we're going to create um, a random number. We need to run this command from the uh, timer header. We're going to set this to null here. Okay. Oops. There we go. And next, we're going to say string dice six. That's creating our array, which will hold strings, and there will be six options um, because there's six sides to the die. We're going to say dice uh, zero, which would be the first side of the die. We're going to say equals the string red. We're going to say dice one, so the next side of the die equals yellow. To save some time, I am going to 
copy and paste that. Change this to two. And let's see. Whoops. And we'll change this to a three. So once again, we're just creating each side of the die. And there are on each die, one red side, two yellow sides, and three green sides. Okay. Now that we have our die created, or dice depending on how many times we uh, loop through this, we're going to check to see if the user put in any arguments. Uh, basically the number of times to roll and the number of dice to roll. So we're going to say argc, uh, the arg argument count, if that's less than two, then we are going to print f how many times do you want to roll and create a new line after that um, so basically if there's less than two arguments so basically if the user did not give us all the information we need at the time of running the program we will ask for the information we need and we're going to use uh, scan f to get the user input and we will say we'll put that into a variable called roles and then we need to find out uh, print f the number of dice to roll so we'll say how many dice do you want to roll new line character there and we'll grab the user input with scan f And we will say to put the user input into a variable called dice num. Uh, both these we created up here, but did not set values. So if the user did not pass those as arguments, we're going to ask them for it now. Um, then we're going to say else so if there are at least two arguments, we're going to use those arguments as the variables. The first one will be roles equals uh, ATIO. I have no clue what ATIO stands for. Um, I could guess, though. Argument time of input. I have no clue. Don't quote me on that. That's just a complete guess. Um, but uh, we're going to check the arguments. Th the argument uh, are given kind of like an array. So we got argument one there will be the number of rolls. And dice, number of dice will equal ATIO or OI. And we're going to say once again to check the argument uh, variables input there uh, that is the second one, which would be the number of dice. Really, if you're writing out this program for mm, you know mass usage, you would want to um, have a man file or some sort of output when you run the program telling the user how to put in the variables, uh, the arguments through the variables. But since it's a tutorial, we're not going to get into that. Now we're going to do a loop here. We're going to create a variable called i. Uh, which will equal the number of rolls, and then we will say uh, while i is greater than zero, um, we're going to say i minus minus. So basically we're taking whatever the number of rolls are, so let's say we roll a hundred times, uh, each time it loops it's going to subtract one, so i minus minus means subtract one from that value, uh, and do this as long as it's greater than zero. Uh, we'll put our brackets here for the for loop. And we are now going to do another for loop. Uh, we'll say y will equal the dice 
number, so the number of dice, we'll say as long as y is greater than zero, loop, and each time we loop, subtract one from y. So we are going to, you know, have a die, uh, say we have four dice we're rolling. Each time we roll, we're going to roll each die one time. Uh, now we're going to say r, which is a variable we created earlier. We're going to say set that to a random number, uh, and we're going to limit that to six sides, so zero through five in this case, for our array, which is, once again, uh, created right here with its values. So we're creating r so that we can check uh, the array. So now we're going to say set die equal to dice r. So basically we are setting die and then we're looking at our array and we're putting in here a number between 0 and 5, which is the random number generated here. And from that we're getting the string that that array uh, number equals. Now we're going to say print f. We're going to print out a string here with a comma after it. And that string will be whatever the value of die is. Next, we are going to uh, do an if then statement. We're going to say if die equals green. Then we're going to take the value of green, which uh, we set above. Uh, we started it at zero because we had had zero greens when we start the program. And we'll add one to it if there is a green. Next, we're going to say else if die equals red, then we're going to take the value of red and add one to it. The reason we say else if in this case rather than just else is because there are yellow rolls which we don't care about. Uh, but we need to have in there in the array to get an accurate number. Okay, next we're going to basically print a new line character. Um, because basically every time that loops we're saying this color was rolled, comma, this color was rolled, comma, and when we're done with that roll then we need to create a new line. So we're just going to print f new line character. That's all that does. Then we're going to say if green equals zero and red is less than zero. Then we're going to take the number of losses and add one to it. So lose uh, which starts at zero, and we'll, if that's true, we'll now equal one. Else, oops. we will add one to win. And I'm going to explain all this, hopefully a little bit better here in a moment. We're going to say red equals zero, green equals zero, which is just resetting them back to zero before we loop again. So we're mostly done. We've got all our rolls. We just now to need to print our output. So I'm going to say print f. I'm going to say wins percent d n for new line losses colon percent d which are the placeholders for the variables we're about to put in there, which are win, comma, lose. And that's our whole program, so let's quickly look over it. Here we're starting our main function, getting the arguments passed from the users if there are any, creating a bunch of variables up here. Next we're resetting uh, our time null to null for, um, for our random generator. Uh, then we're creating our die, which is six sides. Here are the six sides of it, 
one red, two yellow, three greens. Um, and then we're going to say, well, if the user gave us uh, didn't give us argument arguments or didn't give us enough arguments, then we're going to ask them for the imp information we need, which is the number of rolls, the number of dice, and placing them in these variables here. Now, if they did give us at least two arguments, hopefully they're proper ones, we're going to get those arguments and put them into the variables here. Next, we're going to start our main for loop here. We're going to say uh, create a variable called i, set it to the number of rolls, and then as long as i is over zero, we're going to do this loop, but each time it loops, subtract one from the number. So if we say we're run running a hundred times, we're going to say it's a hundred. Next time it loops, it's going to be 99, then 98, all the way down to zero. Um, then we're going to say, you know, for each number of die we're rolling, so for each die we're rolling, uh, as long as it's over zero. So we, we're going to start off, let's say we're going to roll five dice. It will equal five, we'll roll one, then roll the next, then roll the next, roll the next, uh, very quickly here. Putting the output on a line separated by commas, and, uh, and we're counting the number of greens on that line and the number of reds on that line. Uh, and then we're going to check. If there's zero green, but red is greater than zero, well, then you lost, because anytime you have a red with no greens, you've lost. But as long as you have at least one green, uh, you're good, or if there's no reds, you're good. So we add to the win column there. Uh, so, and then we have to reset our uh, values for red and green before we loop back again to the beginning of the loop, because this loop, each time it loops, is one roll of a certain number of dice. Once we've rolled the number of rolls that we've inputted, we're going to get our output, which is number of losses and number of wins. Let's save that. I'm going to use GCC. Our program, the output will say toss up. And I type something wrong. Let's go in here and see what I typed wrong. And hopefully I can figure it out because, well, let's look at the it's saying uh, line 37, character 15, I believe is the way you read that. So line 37, uh, oh, that should be a comma, not a period. Okay, let's try compiling it again. It compiled properly, woo! Okay, now we're gonna run the program. It's gonna ask how many times you wanna roll. We'll say 100. And it says, how many dice do you want to roll? We'll say five. So as you can see, there should be 100 lines with five dice rolled each line. And down here, it will tell you, you won 98% of the time on those 100 rolls. Of course, you'll, you can, uh, oops, let's control C that. Give it the input, we'll say 100 rolls here, two dice, we'll roll that. Here, uh, we won 86% of the time and lost 14. So as I roll, obviously you're gonna get different numbers each time. But it looks like if you have two dice to roll, I would say, looks like you have 10 to 15% chance of losing. Let's roll it a thousand times. It's uh, 131, uh, which is 13%, 15% chance of losing, 18% chance of losing, 14% chance of losing, 12% chance of losing. Let's try one die a thousand times. Now you also notice that compared to if you watch the bash uh, video, this runs a whole lot faster. In fact, here in a second, I'll give you and uh, we'll compare the two. Um, so 16, 16, if I run this program twice in a row, you see I get the same output twice in a row. I think that's because of the way I do random numbers using the uh, time li library. And so um, it generates a random number based on time because computers can't really generate random numbers. So there's probably a better way. In fact, I, I think I've done better ways in other scripts, other programs. Um, but since it's using the time, I think if you run something within the same second, it's gonna give you the same output. So probably could have done the random number a little bit better, but it is giving us good output here. Let's, uh, let's now compare this 
uh, to our bash script. So I'm going to use the time command. Well, let's we'll run or roll 10 dice a thousand times and time it. Here you can see that uh, system 4% user, it's, it's running really fast. <laughs> let's, let's go back and go into our bash script here and we'll run the same thing. We'll say time, then the name of our script here, we'll roll uh, a thousand times ten dice. You can see it takes a little bit longer to run. Here it says that it took, um, let's see, user system. I forget which time. I want to say that uh, this is probably the most accurate time. This, this uh, total here, uh, CPU time, it's probably the time that we're going for because it probably took just under three seconds. Let's run it again. One, two, three. Yep. So looking here, it took uh, 2.9 seconds to run the bash script. We'll run it again. Of course, this will vary on system to system depending on the speed of your system, but consistently just under three seconds. If we go back into our C here and we say time, whoops, what am I doing? Time toss up a thousand times 10 dice you can see it took less than a tenth of a second so this is this is one of those examples where crunching these numbers when you're doing something like this it's still pretty fast but you can see why uh, a compiled program like C is definitely faster than uh, a, a bash script or a shell script of some sort obviously both programs probably could have been written better uh, but both seem to work so uh, and that was pretty good odds. If if you're running, if you have full 10 dice, you got pretty good chance of winning. So that time we got zero losses, zero losses. So whenever you have the full 10 dice, you got a pretty good chance of winning. There you have uh, 2%, actually not 2%, 0.02%, right? Because we're running 1,000 times, or 0.2%. So, so if you're playing toss-up and you have all 10 dice, I would recommend rolling. Otherwise, you're not really playing. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial wasn't too long and boring. Uh, and uh, I hope you're enjoying these, seeing how I do the same thing in different programming languages. Uh, the next tutorial will probably be on doing the same program. Uh, I'm thinking in JavaScript, well, which will be even slower than the Bash script, I can almost guarantee. Okay, I thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. Also in the description, if I did not forget, should be a link to this C code. Uh, so you can download it or copy and paste it at least, both. Um, but I also recommend typing it out if you're trying to learn. And also if you are a C programmer and you're just banging your head against the wall watching how I program in C because I know I'm a horrible C programmer, sorry. <laughs> at least it works. Uh, but I would love to see your solutions. So go ahead and post your solutions and then uh, put a link in the uh, comments if you can to it on Pastebin or something like that. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope that you have a great day.